Good morning. Yeah? Come in. Good morning. How are you doing, sir? Breakfast time for everybody. And by everybody, I mean not you guys. You all eat too much. Just a pony. Hello. Look at those cheeks. This is my every morning. Thank you for massaging my calf muscle. This is lovely. While I wait for this alum to finish eating his breakfast, I spend some bonding time with the boys and Rue, who just can't be bothered. Merlin is fascinated by her scratching her butt. Stick your tongue in your mouth, boy. That's rude. Hello, <laughs> Neville. And hello, Napoleon. Everybody loves you. And we're done. <laughs> Don't mind his tail. The goats ate it all off. Hi. Okay. Hello. This is, it's fine. The lighting's fine. It's a very overcast day, so we're going to deal with it. Uh, but I wanted to do just a reading vlog, like a one day in my life reading vlog. It should probably be more like a day in the life because I don't know how much reading is actually going to happen. One, thank you for this amazing mug, Julie. I saw Julie at ALA and she gave me an adorable wedding present of a wifey and hubby mug and hubby is at work. So that's why I'm vlogging today. <laughs> today is the day that Randy works both jobs. So I have the house to myself literally all day long. So I am attempting to vlog in attempts to not procrastinate on life. As in, if I have to hold myself accountable for vlogging during the day, that means I can't sit on the couch and watch YouTube all day long, which is what I really want to do, but I also need to get stuff done, like reading and adult things and cleaning and whatnot. So this is going to be more of a day in the life type of thing, which I'm attempting to maybe bring to the channel in case you guys were curious, because I personally get really excited when booktubers do things that are not necessarily bookish. I know that's kind of counterintuitive to booktube, but I really enjoy seeing like more into their lives. I just personally enjoy that, so I'm gonna attempt to do it as well. I'm gonna act like it's way earlier in the morning than it actually is. No, I'm just kidding, it's 11 o'clock. I work a night shift, so I'm a vampire now. Um, I am not naturally a morning person, but the past 10 years of working at like 5 or 6 a.m. turned me into a morning person. I am very quickly reverting back to vampire mode within the first couple months of doing this night shift. So it's 11. <laughs> My day is just getting started. Um, Randy already got up and left for work, so everybody's already been fed, except for Hercules, because he just kind of eats whenever. This is the beginning of my day, and it will extend late into the night, is kind of how my planning goes. So one, before I forget, because I know I'm gonna get a ton of questions, because I got a ton of questions the last time I wore this shirt, I got this shirt from Zulily. I know a ton of people asked, because a lot of people are Office fans, it's from Zoo Lily, and I don't know if it's still on there or not, but I've seen this like specific print on a lot of different websites. So I'm pretty sure if you look up like Shroot Farms shirt, you can probably find the same thing. But a lot of people asked when I wore this. And yes, I am a diehard Office and Parks and Recs fan. So talk to me about The Office. The plan for today, as far as reading goes, because that's what most of you are probably here for, is I am trying to finish up The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. This is what I'm currently reading, and I'm probably about a third of the way into it, and I'm loving it. And it's reading so so fast so I actually think I can probably sit down and honestly crank out the rest of this book in maybe one or two sittings so that's the plan for physical reading I do have some cleaning and I'd like to clean the barn out today so that means I need an audiobook ready to go and I have a bunch of different options and I'm in the weirdest funk of my life like I listen to audiobooks 24 7 like that's my go-to thing and I haven't been in the mood recently um but the um next true north book just came out Heartland and I pre-ordered the Kindle version because the paperback isn't available yet to actually order like the physical book. So I pre-ordered the um, ebook and I just added the Audible um, thing on. You know, if you order like the Kindle edition of book, they give you the option to add on the audiobook for a discounted price. I did that because your girl's out of credits. Uh, but I really want to listen to this because from what I know of this, in case you guys didn't know, this is a, like an adult contemporary romance series set in Vermont on like an apple orchard farm and it follows different like romances each story. This is book seven and this is one of my favorite series that I've like picked up since starting reading the romance genre. Um, and from what I know of this, hold on, let me scan through to the first thing because I'm pretty positive, yes. Let me zoom in because there are goats in this book. Can you guys see the chapter headers? 
It is a goat. So moral of the story, I am stupid excited to read this book. So I think the plan are those two books for today as far as reading goes. I need to edit some stuff. P.S. This is what I look like when I wake up. I'm not doing my hair today. It's my day off. You're lucky that I put eyebrows on. Um, but I have not many like actual plans today other than I need to edit and upload a video and clean the house up a little bit. And then everything else is free time. I have set a tree to go on my phone so that I am not distracted in case you guys didn't know, this is the app that I use for like productivity stuff. It's called Forest. You literally just grow a little tree. And if you leave this app, you kill your little tree and the guilt works on me. I'll do a whole video about like apps and reading stuff. I know people have been asking about it since I mentioned doing that. It's still coming. I have plans in the works, but I have my little tree set to grow. So the phone is done for at least the next two hours. Life. Sitting on the front porch, sipping on the rocks Citrus in our beverages Citrus in our beverages Show only the good sides Always pretty smiles are covering our faces You know it is all lies You know it is all lies On and on and on it goes Round and round the rodeo Breathing out air for a minute Taking my time to begin with On and on and on it goes Swing it down in life, you know so I wanted to actually talk to you guys about this book because I've been reading it for a while and I've been loving it so much. Um, so this book comes out, I believe in February. I don't know the exact date. It just says February 2020. So this is coming out very soon. This is the same author that wrote the Daughter of the Pirate King duology and Warrior in the Wild. I didn't read the pirate books. I have them. I would like to now that I've been reading her newer stuff, but I loved Warrior in the Wild. Like I feel like that was a very underhyped book. It came out early in 2019 and it was a standalone Viking story that was like really unique in the fantasy aspect, like the fantasy things that were added to it, I loved. And it had like a really kick-ass Viking chick protagonist. And this book is even better. So this book is totally gonna appeal to fans of like Throne of Glass because our main character is so Aelin, like so Aelin. She is smart and she is taking no prisoners. She reminds me of a mixture of Aelin and Mia from Nevernight where she is just, a badass. Like the first sentence of the book, am I allowed to read this? I don't know. It's an arc. I'm going to give you the first sentence regardless because it's a teaser. But the first sentence is they've never found the body of the first and only boy who broke my heart and they never will. So that's the tone that this book starts out on. So this chick is taken names and I love her so much. The entire plot of the story is that she is just kind of done with dealing with the boys that she's been sleeping with for a long time and the life that she's been living. So her new adventure is she's going to woo the Shadow King, like this big powerful boy king who is ruling the nation. She's gonna get him to fall in love with her, marry her, and then she's gonna kill him and take over the kingdom for herself. I love that. Like you kind of go into this book from page one knowing that our protagonist is gonna be not your damsel in distress and not weak and she's very snarky she's very quick-witted she reminds me so much of Aelin because she also designs her own dresses and kind of sets the fashion trends for the kingdom as she like rises to fame everybody follows her trends and she's not afraid to dress sexy in a world that doesn't dress sexy and I just love the like female empowerment that she's got going on in this story and it's not over the top but it's definitely like very apparent every single page that she is like in charge of her own life she's in charge of her own destiny and she doesn't care about what men can do for her she's gonna murder them and take their power anyway so it's fine there is a cricket for you guys by the way she took my spot but i am just loving this um the shadow king is very much asriel so you guys know that like I am way too attached to him whether he gets murdered in this book or not I still don't know um, but he has these shadows that like are constantly surrounding him and protecting him and we haven't really discovered his powers yet but you can just definitely tell that he's like emanating power and darkness and I love it he is so Asriel so this is basically Aelin if she were to try and woo Asriel and kill him and murder him and I'm like well I'm in so that's where I am with this book I'm loving it so much. 
Um, I definitely want to sit down and try and read as much as I can later on in the day, but I think I'm going to work on importing footage so that I have room on this card to keep vlogging for today. So I'm going to try and import some footage and edit a video and get a video up for you guys today and then continue to vlog. And maybe while that's importing, I'm going to do some like vacuuming and cleaning and whatnot and pop in some headphones and listen to Heartland because I'm so excited because there's goats. Okay, that's the plan. I will see you guys in a bit. Taking my time to begin with On and on and on it goes Swinging down in life, you know Breathing all that for a minute Yeah Hey, would you rather stay right here? Make everything disappear You can play my favorite song Put your rose colored glasses on What if we stay right here? Make everything disappear Lay low in the bitchy sun It is probably many hours later. It is 2.21 right now. It's not that many hours actually, but I've been very productive. And by that, I mean, I did all of the vacuuming and the organizing and the cleaning that I need to do. I've got laundry in. I'm being a functioning adult right now. Update on Heartland because I eventually reached the point where I stopped doing things and I just sat down and played Candy Crush and listened to this for like an hour while I ate lunch. And then I stopped eating lunch and I continued to play Candy Crush and listen to this. So I am currently on chapter 11 of this. One, I'm loving it. There are so many, oh my God, oh my God, kitten. <laughs> Cricket just like launched herself at me um, with her little fuzz ball. This is all that remains of the Santa hat that she dug out during the Christmas season. She ripped the puff ball off of the Santa hat and now this is what remains and it is her favorite toy in the entire world to play with. So here, you can have this. It'll go up there. Anyway, <laughs> um, so, okay, things about this book. I'm loving it. It's getting me right back into the fall time Vermont Shipley family feels where it takes place up in Vermont during October. So this is for sure going to be a book that I'm going to reread during the fall season because it's perfect. Um, it has all of the things that I'm so excited about in this book, but it also has a lot of things that I really dislike in romance. So I'm feeling conflicted. In romance books, the few things that I really, really dislike seeing in books is cheating or like secondhand cheating or something like that. And this book has it. It takes itself not very seriously. Like it's kind of established from the start that the romance that Dylan, who is our main love interest in, 
um, is in is not, like, a loving relationship. Like, they're just hooking up exclusively sort of thing, and it's the roommate of our main girl protagonist. Cricket is just losing her dang mind right now. She is down here just, like, losing her mind. This is your fuzz. Cool? Cool? We good? Can I have this? No? Okay. Anyway, hello. The Dylan is dating the roommate of our main girl. We're obviously going to end up together, but um, I don't like that in books. That's just something that just immediately puts me off of a romance. Like, I don't think it's necessary. If you're gonna use another relationship as an obstacle to get to the ultimate relationship, I don't think that's healthy to represent in books. I know that it happens in real life, and I know that it's a realistic thing, and this one is not, like, super bad. Like, there's no serious relationship formed. It's just they're hooking up exclusively, and this girl wishes she was the one hooking up with him. But either way, it's just something that just kind of takes me out of the story, so I don't like that. I have weird thoughts about the fact that we are going back to one of the girls who came from the cult. One of my favorite ones in the series is Zach's story, and Zach is um, an ex-cult member. Like, he escaped from, like, a commune, like, a polygamous commune situation, and it was his love story. I think he was book two? two or three in this series, and I loved it. I love seeing that element, specifically seeing the guy in a relationship have no experience sexually and be very intimidated by that part of the relationship. It was a very cool thing to see in the book. So we are going back to that, and the main girl that we're following this book is actually like the reason that he ended up leaving the cult. Like he and her ended up kissing when they were in this commune situation, and he got banished and she got like shamed and beaten and everything. So we're following her part of it, which is kind of cool to go back to because I really liked that storyline and it's a very interesting thing to introduce to a romance story. Can you just see her like butt going bananas? Um, but it's another one of those situations where this girl came from an extreme situation and has no experience sexually, is very interested in sexual things and questions her own thoughts and her own sexuality about stuff just because she never got to experience it or never got to like get questions answered at like a healthy age as she was like developing and whatnot. So that's not a thing that's going to deter me from a book, but I am personally on a kick right now where I really enjoy reading books where the female lead in a romance is like confident in her sexuality and is not ashamed of not knowing things or isn't ashamed of being a virgin or any of those things, because I feel like that's a very powerful statement that we're making right now, not even just in the romance genre, but just in books in general. Like, there's a lot of feminist agenda in a lot of books, and I dig it. And this is kind of reverting back to a very severe situation. Like, we're on the opposite end of the spectrum, which is fine, and that's part of the story, and it plays a big role in it and everything. But I just don't like that she is being coddled. She's very much like the damsel in distress type of character. So those are my two gripes. One, we're back on the Shipley farm. I'm loving it. Actually, we're in like a college setting, but Dylan is like commuting kind of back and forth. And Dylan is helping Griffin, who is like our, he's the, the romantic interest that started the series off. He is like the oldest brother. He's the one who runs the farm now. And he's kind of like the adult figure in this family at this point. Um, he is helping his brother with goats that won't stop escaping and milking these goats and trying to find like a purpose for having goats on the farm because earlier in the series they sold off like their dairy farm and whatever. So it has goats in it and I love their role. I'm pretty sure they're like Nubian goats so they're not like my goats but oh my god I just love that there's like goat stuff in this book because that was so unexpected and such a small niche thing that would only really appeal to me. Let's be real. So that's exciting but they just kind of started their endeavor like in Bittersweet, the very first book, the whole, like, story behind the romance was, like, they were developing hard cider, trying to, like, save the family orchard. So this is kind of a very small side story of that, where they are trying to come up with a reason to save the goats on the farm and keep the goats and make them earn their worth. So they are making goat milk caramels. I'm so excited. This is such a cute, like, fall line. And it's romantic in the kitchen, and they're using goat's milk, and I'm just loving it so much. This is so fun. So, this is my life now. In case you guys were wondering what it's like having, like, a nine-month-old kitten, it's this all the time. <laughs> it's fine. I don't need this chair to be intact at all. Here, have your fuzzball. Do you want this? There you go. So, 
that's where I am with Heartland. I am going to go try and finish up my adulty stuff for today. I need to call insurance because I got married. So I need to be put on uh, my husband's, oh my God, still exciting, um, insurance plan and cancel mine because that's a whole thing that you have to deal with as an adult. And I'm dreading this phone call. I've been putting it off all day. It's the afternoon now and I still haven't made the call. So I need to do that. And my computer just shut itself off, but I need to edit that video but all I really want to do is listen straight through Heartland, which I have a feeling I'm going to do this afternoon. So I have a feeling I'll have like a wrap up for this book specifically in this video. And then we'll see how far I can get in um, that other book I'm reading, The Shadows Between Us. Okay. Hey, I was not planning on popping in right now, but I just had one of those moments when you're reading and real life clashes with your book in like the weirdest way possible. So I'm over here listening to Heartland. I'm finishing up like cleaning up for dinner. I just made dinner and I was gonna have a little bit of a snack. I went into the cabinet and we have a few of these like random chocolate bars that I felt like were fitting that I should have like the salted caramel one. But hold on, let me play something for you real quick. Let me turn the volume up. I'm gonna play something for you. A shake for chastity at the bookstore. This time it's a tiny box of two truffles from Lake Champlain chocolates. When Ricky texts me. This won't focus. Look at the brand of chocolate that I just got out of my cabinet. Focus back on my face now. Okay. I've never heard of this brand. Um, Randy works at like an organic um, grocery distributor. He works there part time and it's one of those places where he can bring home a lot of the things that might be like opened, like open boxes or whatever. So like a, a store that would have gotten a box of these to sell individually, it might've been open so he can bring them home. I've literally never heard of this brand and I was so excited because it's the salted caramel thing, which is relative to this book because they're making caramel. So I was like, I wanna have something caramel. Does anybody else get easily influenced like that? Just me, cool. I've literally never heard of Lake Champlain chocolates before, but it's in this book right now and it's going in my mouth right now i just needed to share okay that's a thing that just happened that just blew my goddamn mind i literally was listening to it and i went to open this and i flipped it over and had like a heart attack what what are the odds this is a very small company that i'm assuming is probably east coast local i don't really know if you know let me know have you heard of this brand because i'm about to consume it same with the people in this book the end it's much later it is like 8 30 right now and i just finished heartland by Serena Bowen and oh did you come to join me yay I have a cricket to join me did you guys notice she literally follows me everywhere it's the cutest thing in the world I have some thoughts it's not my favorite one which is a bummer for me just because it had the makings to be like one of my favorites just because hello goats and caramels and whatnot but I feel like there were some choices that were made as far as how the whole like ex cult thing was handled I feel like for Zach's story earlier on in the series, it was handled very, very well. It was pretty tastefully done and it felt very researched. And this might just be my personal opinion on this just because I can't speak to the authenticity of whether this is accurate or not. But I feel like there are things that weren't very sensitively handled in this one. And it might just be because it deals with a girl who, um, is coming to terms with like her sexuality when she was very shunned for that prior in her life, but I feel like there were some choices that were made that might authentically be what a girl in that situation would be. And again, I can't speak to that, but I feel like there were just some not well handled scenes when it came to the sex things. That was kind of my main gripe for this. Um, I liked it. It was still sexy. There were still some scenes where I was like, oh man, but it was not as like well established as some of her other ones. I feel like this series, I either really, really connect with the romance or I don't. And I don't think I did with this one just because I don't think either of the characters, um, was handled very well. Both of them were kind of dealing with things that were out of my element and out of my wheelhouse of what would be a normal reaction to things or not. So it was not my favorite of the series. That being said, I still consider it like a three and a half to four star read just because I really enjoy her romances. I don't know what it is about, oh man, I am sorry, about the entire um, setting of the series and the family and whatnot, but I just feel so like at home when I'm reading this series. So I still just love it. I'm still rating it somewhat emotionally because I still really enjoyed my entire experience reading it. P.S. The chocolates, like the caramel chocolates were delicious. So Lake Champlain, I looked it up. That's definitely a Vermont chocolate company. How that ended up in my pantry in Pennsylvania, I don't know, but I thoroughly enjoyed that weird serendipitous experience. But, um, 
that's where I'm sitting with it. It's probably gonna be like a three and a half ish probably four stars like on Goodreads for me because I still love the series and I still love goats and the Shipleys and Vermont. That's where I'm gonna end it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys liked this style of video, let me know. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in my next video.